Hey, Joe, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I already told you I'm a huge fan of self hacks. So it was actually really exciting when your team reached out to see if you could be on the podcast. I'm like, uh, hmm, let me think about it for a second. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I know like everything that you're about is honestly what I'm about and what my audience is about. And it's all about optimizing truly like not having to live a life where you're diminished because your your health is not where it could be um do you mind sharing a little bit of how you got on this train yeah definitely thanks for having me here yeah so uh yeah i mean basically i i had a lot a story that was very similar to a lot of people in this space where you know uh, i think the main story is that people we're not being helped by the mainstream medical establishment, meaning there maybe their issues didn't fit into any specific diagnosis. That's one possibility. Or another possibility is that they fit into a diagnosis, but the mainstream treatment didn't help them. Right. So those are the two main reasons why people get into this. Maybe they're, they're basically, if they don't fit into a diagnosis, that usually means they don't have any recognizable or, you know, serious ailment, but they feel that they're not optimal. Mm -hmm. So I was in that kind of category where I didn't have any serious disease, but I felt I was not optimal. I was not able to perform well in my day-to-day life. And so, you know, I, I mean, it affected all aspects of my performance, whether it was in school, whether it was for a job, relationships. Um, you know, I, I really couldn't, before a certain age, I really couldn't uh, hold down a job because I wasn't able to work effectively. Yeah. And, I, I, oh, yeah. sorry to interrupt you. I noticed that you said like, even as a kid, you felt like brain fog, fatigue, anxiety, depression. And I like, I, I'm being real. I saw, I see this when my son is 12, he's almost 13. And like, I see these things. I'm like, you're really prone to inflammation. Like he will do football and he like, he's like so inflamed. I'm like, how can you be so inflamed as a 12 year old? And then he does, his mood will start to go down and everything starts to yeah. like crash. I, so I, I love that you're pointing out that you can even notice this stuff as a kid like it's coming. <laughs> yeah, even so even as a kid I noticed it, but the thing is is that it got worse as I got older. Mm-hmm. And you know, and as a kid you're not you don't really know what you need to do to right. make you don't you don't even know if this if you're not optimal. There's no way right. like you don't it's not a conversation like it's very hard to put yourself in someone else's perspective. Right. So it, it's very hard to even realize that you have any kind of issue whatsoever cuz anything that you have feels like it's normal unless there's something seriously wrong. Like, you know, if you're just bedridden or something, or you can't, you know, you can't get out of bed or you have something that really hurts and, you know, you go to the doctor, they see, Oh, you have your appendix or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But anything outside of that, you don't, a a kid is not going to know that they're not feeling well. And, and so I, I didn't know I was not optimal, but as I got older, I started to understand more, of the world. And I started to realize that, Hey, wait a second, there's people that don't, that aren't experiencing what I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I would ask a lot of people like, do you get tired after meals? And some people would answer no. Some people would answer, uh, yeah, like, yeah. Or, you know, it depends what I eat or you get Mm -hmm. different responses. But in any case, what I noticed is that there was something wrong and I wasn't fitting into any, uh, serious condition. So, but I did realize that something needed to change and that's what I, uh, you know, so I basically started working for a bunch of years on my body, trying to figure out how the body works and how natural stuff works, like mm-hmm. exercise, supplements, lifestyle, all these kinds of things to get me into an optimal place. Yeah. What did you experience? Like, as you found, like, cause I know even adults, all of us, we don't, you don't know that there's a whole nother level of living until you get into it. And then you're like, Oh my gosh, like I was not in a good way at all. I didn't even know. I thought that's just how life is. And then you like do something that optimizes your brain or you drop inflammation and you're just like, I'm like a freaking superhuman now. <laughs> it's like truly how you feel. So like, what was that for you? What happened? Cause I know like, I want to go, we are going to get into, I want to get into like nootropics and mood and all of that stuff and getting into the, like these more peak mental states. But like, what did you experience? What did that, how did that journey go for you? 
so yeah, I had a lot of issues. I had mood issues. I had, um, you know, there was anxiety, there were just lower mood. There was, um, uh, OCD and then there was physical, like I had inflammation, I had gut issues, I had insomnia, I had fatigue. Um, and they weren't really re- like, they were, ver- they were different from the other issues, but they all, they, my issues happened to have stemmed from inflammation. Mm-hmm. And, um, so once I was able to reduce the inflammation, I was able to, you know, uh, you know, basically like do quite a lot of stuff. My motivation went up, my energy levels went up and everything started to improve from there. I was able to start working and that's when I uh, started self-hacked essentially. So what, how did you remove the inflammation? What did that look like? So, uh, I mean, there was, there was a few things. Number one is a lot of my inflammation had to do with food. Yep. Food sensitivities. <laughs> Yep. And then another part was just kind of general optimizations that I wasn't doing, right? Right. Um, you know, these are kind of like living healthy in various different ways, taking certain supplements or whatever that were kind of separated from the food. And so there was kind of a combination between the two, probably uh, 60% dietary related and then 40% through other optimizations. Yeah, I love it. I mean, was it Hippocrates that said like uh, inflammation is the root of all disease and that food is your medicine? I mean, truly, like uh, Dave Asprey's book, Game Changers, he like all of all of the health experts he has interviewed, he he would ask them, what is the number one contributor to you being a game changer? And they're not all health experts. Some of them are just business badasses, you know, but like all, the number one thing they all said was the food I eat. They, they know, they know. And I know too, just like you, like, I'm like, if I, I, sure, can I get away with eating donuts for lunch and like not get fat? Yeah. Cause I don't ever do that. So like, if I do it one time, it's not gonna be a big deal, but do I know that, am I going to have like a super drop in mental performance for the rest of the day? Yup. Like, <laughs> so it's like, do I want to deal with that? No. Right. <laughs> right. And then do I know I'm going to wake up the next day and feel a little bit more inflamed? Like I'm not going to feel as recovered. Yup. So it's like, do I want to deal with all that? So I love, I love that you're saying this. Cause like, that is the numero uno thing. It's like, we got to get the foundation. Stop putting inflammatory crap in your body is like the first fixer <laughs> instead of having to combat it with all these supplements and whatever. It's like, don't inflame the crap out of your body in the first place. And I bet I kind of curious, I, this is selfish because my son who's 12 that I know is prone to inflammation he like loves sardines he loves seaweed he loves anything that's omega-3 rich he's like like golem he's like my precious I mean he's like devouring it and I'm curious if like you you were ever drawn to like foods like that that would help combat inflammation when you were going through that phase from like kid to adulthood that's a good question I mean I'm not sure. I don't think I was able to realize what Mm -hmm. was uh, giving me inflammation or not. I kind of was just buying into the mainstream of what's healthy Mm -hmm. and what's not. So I would eat a lot of whole wheat bread and stuff. Right. um, And that wasn't good for me. So I don't think I was able to like, like if I did eat, I remember eating sardines at one point because I, you know, read it was healthy, Yeah. but I would eat it with like whole wheat bread and I think it's a little hard to, it's a little hard to tell what is like yeah. where your inflammation was from. So yeah, uh, one of the things that we did, and this is why genetics can be very important, is we, we focus on a certain topic. So we take the genes that are, are, are related to food sensitivity in some way or another, whether directly or indirectly. And then um, we, we, we have a, like we're, we have a report around that, let's say. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that can help you see what your risk is with regard to food sensitivities. Cause it is a little difficult to know if you're sensitive to foods. Uh, the, the Holy grail is, you know, the best way to check is through an elimination diet, but also now we have a food sensitivity report that you can look at which genes are increasing your risk for food sensitivities. And yeah. 
Yeah, I love that because I because I'm I'm a huge fan of this too. Um, and if you guys don't know, so self hacked also Joe has now it's self decode.com. You can go there. I'll put a link in the show notes too. But you can take your um, do you guys do like are you analyzing the raw data from like 23andMe or these others or do, can they just do the full tilt thing with you guys or how does that work? They can do the full thing with us. Okay. Or they can if they already have an existing file, then it's probably not necessary to buy another one. Okay, cool. So, so we can take it, take your DNA and run it through all these major health markers and see what your predispositions are. Of course, there's epigenetics and all of that, and you can change your genes. But if you have two, both copies of a gene mutated that are correlated with you being able to, let's say, you know, MTHFR is really common, to be able to like extract folate out of food and turn it into the active form, you've got double mutation on that. Like your likelihood of being able to do that is in the crapper. So you might want to take a look at that and see if maybe your chronic fatigue is related to MTHFR gene mutations. Or like this one, you're talking about, um, I look at this too with my clients. I'm like, it genetically, you are likely to have issues with lactose. Do you find that to be true? And they're like, yup. <laughs> and what's really cool about it though, is like, sometimes people know that they have food sensitivities. Like they kind of know, you kind of know that you don't do great with dairy or you don't do great with gluten, but you don't want to face it and you just keep eating it and your mood goes to crap. You're, you're, you have anxiety, you have depression, you have inflammation. You don't feel like working out. All of these things are happening. And sometimes just seeing that freaking like an analysis on the DNA and says like, look, you have genetic mutations here. Like this is an issue for you can get people to actually freaking pay attention and wake up and make those changes that they need to do. So it's kind of cool to get like scientific backup on those food issues. hundred percent. But, and, and it's not only that, it's also when you, uh, when you're, let's say downloading a certain report or topic, you can get the, the recommendations that, Let's say for food sensitivities, it's things you can do to lower your food sensitivities based on your genes. Cool. Now, not always can you get rid of them. A lot of most of the times, like a lot of times, you can't. But uh, you can count, counteract certain genes that you wouldn't have as much negative effects. I love that. Yeah, I went through. I went through South Dakota. I use that. I'm like, this is amazing. You guys, just so many reports and so much information. That's the biggest thing about self hack that I love is like, it's not just like surfacey information. It's not just like here's a few tips. It's like, nope, we're gonna go all the way with as much information as you could possibly ever want on that topic. I love that you've done that both on self hacked and in South Dakota. So it's really, really cool. If you want to, if you want to geek out on yourself and dive deeper, like you guys have created such an amazing resource for that. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Can we talk about mood for a minute? Yeah. Let's, let's go for right. it. Let's geek out on mood. So um, yeah. What are the biggest hitters on mood that you see from both a genetic perspective? Uh, maybe, you know, we can weave this into gut health or whatever, but what are your thoughts on what's affecting mood so much for people? Well, like everything else, it really depends on genetics, right? So basically the way that a lot of these issues work is through different pathways and uh, particularly specific genes within these pathways, how they're working. And they can cause the same you know, symptoms, which is, let's say, mood issues, not being as happy, maybe some depression. But uh, the cause could be different. That's why, for example, you know, there's a certain number of people that do well with serotonin, increasing serotonin, whereas some other people don't. So a lot of, there are a lot of genes related to serotonin, either directly or indirectly. Uh, there's, you know, and, and there's genes related to dopamine, uh, GABA. Mm -hmm. uh, there's genes related to like certain hormones, uh, especially oxytocin. So you know how oxytocin is like a positive hormone and that actually has an impact on happiness. There's genes related to the cannabinoid receptor. And so the cannabinoid receptor, you know, basically like we all know that it, when, if you smoke pot, you feel really happy. <laughs> and so that it's very clear, you know, that there's a very clear way to experience that, you know, yeah. basically like the cannabinoid receptors are very influential when it comes to uh, happiness and mood. And, um, 
The other things are like BDNF and pathways related to that. Uh, and then there's uh, circadian rhythm genes, and we know that that has an impact, like seasonal affective disorder. So circadian rhythm has an impact on mood. And then um, serotonin genes, and then there uh, and and genes related to that MTHFR a bit as well, but um, meaning like if you're deficient in folate, that could be an issue. Uh, but yeah, if you if you break these things down, like when it comes to the cannabinoid, there's you know, there's different things related to that that have a, a, a big impact. Uh, one is called the CNR1 gene. Another is called uh, FAAH, which is basically one, you know, one thing is the FAAH gene is related to your internal endocannabinoids. So that's like your internal bliss molecules, like how high uh, are your levels of those? And then you have one is like how sensitive your receptor is to uh, cannabinoid molecules. Mm. And um, yeah, and so there's, those are some of the main pathways in which, uh, and then there's also another one I, I, I forgot to mention is related to neurogenesis. I mean, I, I mentioned in, t- in terms of BDNF, CREB. Uh, so th- there's, there's other genes that are related to neurogenesis essentially. So there's neurotransmitters like dopamine, serotonin, uh, GABA, Serotonin is the biggest one, and dopamine is number two. And then there's uh, circadian rhythm stuff, and and the circadian rhythm stuff also controls a lot of other genes, like you know neurotransmitters, neuro, neurogenesis, things like that. And another thing actually is related to stress. So there's some stress related genes as well, which kind of goes into the cannabinoid system. Can you walk us through a journey? Like, let's say you, maybe you kind of, you kind of know you got serotonin issues. Maybe you're taking SSRIs. Maybe you just, you have all the symptoms of low serotonin. Like, could you take us through a journey of like what might, what you might find out if you do the DNA testing and how you might help yourself with serotonin? Yeah. So what you would see is that, um, uh, we have, you know, we give basically, uh, kind of risk scores polygenic risk scores where, you know, you, you get some kind of picture with your genetics. Now it's not always accurate because it's very important. I mean, the body's very complex. So like you said, there could be epigenetic factors. Uh, there could be other factors and it's very hard to predict based on your genetics, whether you will get something. Usually sometimes right. it, it could be more clear, right. but often it's very hard to predict, but we, but we do, we do some of that just to, uh, you know, give you the best guess that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, but the more important thing is that someone knows that they have an issue, right? Like mm-hmm. if you have a mood issue, the, I mean, if you don't know it, then, you know, then, then we can, then, then I guess you don't have a problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it, you can, you, you do have a problem, but you're not going to look for help anyway. So, uh, w- the first thing to know, the first thing you have to realize is what are your goals? What are you trying to improve? And if someone says like, okay, I want to be happier. I feel like my mood is not good a lot and I want to improve my mood. The, and so the the thing is, is that you want to look at what are the genes that are increasing your risk of mood issues. And then you want to counteract those effects. So what we do is we're giving you like some kind of, um, you know, risk score based on your genetics. Mm -hmm. And we're also, uh, we're also including lifestyle factors as well in, in a a future version in a few months, uh, in in a month. Um, probably when this is released, it'll be out. Um, but in any case, and, and then the more important thing is we tell you which genes are increasing your risk and how to counteract your risk, uh, from, you know, recommendations that are generally good, but they're also good for those genes in particular. So we won't tell you any recommendations that are not very good for the issue just because, you know, it, it, it's, you know, the, the body is very complex and you, right. the first thing you have to do is make sure that you have good recommendations to start with. You don't want to, uh, you want to make sure that, okay, these are things that are very good for mood and then you want to categorize it, prioritize it, 
based on which ones are most relevant for you. So we give you that prioritized list as well. Yeah. I love that you're calling it a risk score because this is what I always tell my clients too. I'm like, you're the DNA stuff that we're doing it. I'm not diagnosing you. I'm not saying you actually even have an issue here. You may not even have an issue here, but you do have a higher predisposition for that. And that's good information to know. Like for me, for example, I have a mutation on COM T, which is a pretty big hitter on a genetic mutation. And my grandma died of breast cancer when she was 40. Um, COM T, you can cause you to main like uh, not metabolize estrogens as quickly for people listening. And also you can hold on to um, catecholamines longer in your system, like adrenaline. Like I hold that in my system, like 40% longer is what they estimate than other people. That's good information for me to know that I'm predisposed to be that way so that I can make sure that I'm doing things like eating cruciferous vegetables, which help me metabolize estrogens. Um, I also take a supplement called DIM because I just feel, which is basically cruciferous vegetable extract because I feel good when I do that. Um, I make sure like I'm not doing too many things to say high adrenaline all the time because I don't want to take the risk of running my adrenals dry full of all my electrolytes. Right. So it's cool to see, like, here's some things that you are a little bit higher risk for. So you can be on top of those things in your health protocol. It doesn't mean we need to identify of like, I have this, you know, I, sometimes people come to me and they're like, I have a genetic, I have a genetic disease or they'll say something like that. And I'm like, Oh, right. what is it? And they're like MTHFR. I'm like, that's not a genetic disease. Like everybody got that. Like you just <laughs> need to make sure that you might, you might want to take activated full late. You don't have to like identify with like having this major health issue because we all have mutations in our genes. So right. I love that you're calling it like a, a, a risk. It's, it's more of an awareness, right? So it's like, do you right. have high C reactive protein? And then you go back and you look at your DNA and you're predisposed to have high C reactive protein. That's a cool overarching picture for you because now you can see like, I need to be a little bit more on top of fighting inflammation because I have this predisposition. So it kind of like gets it into your soul of like, I need to be on top of this for myself. <laughs> right. So that's what 100%. I love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so something like MTHFR, I wouldn't, like you were saying, I wouldn't focus on specific genes usually, uh, even MTHFR. I would focus on if you're having a mood problem, you know, one of the ways that let's say, and, and this, you know, if you're having a mood problem, the MTHFR could be involved in other things, but you want to deal with the issue and then you could dive into the genes rather than looking right. at your genes and then saying, I have this issue right. because I have this gene. No matter what gene you have, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's expressing in mm -hmm. any given way. It really has, uh, it interacts with a lot of other genes. Right. But there, let's say in the mood report, we have two genes that are related to folate. Mm -hmm. One of them is, you know, FOLH1B. The other is MTHFR. But, you know, you want to look at, like, if you're having a mood issue, and we know that folate is, can be related to mood issues but not with everyone. Mm -hmm. And so you, if you're having, let's say, risk from these genes, you want to try folate and then see if that helps. And right. so, and if that doesn't help at all, and, and you also want to check your labs. So the great thing about self-decode is that we also have a lab platform inbuilt there that you can upload any labs that you want and get a more holistic picture of what you need to fix. So, you know, let's say if... So the, the proper way to do it would be like, okay, what, what is the thing that I have an issue with or I'm trying to optimize? Mm -hmm. And then you would look at your report. You say, okay, I have these folate genes, let's say. Could be MTHFR, could be the FOL H1B gene. And, or, you know, if you have both, then that's even more. But you then want to look at your folate levels and maybe even if you have decently high folate levels, you still want to maybe try it out and see if you notice any difference. And if you don't notice any difference then your problems are probably not from folate. Yeah. But, you know, if, if you still have the variations, uh, you do like the MTHFR variation, you still want to make sure you're getting, you know, either natural folates from vegetables or you're taking some supplement that has the methylated version. Yeah. Yeah. I love this. Cause like, 
I love taking DNA, like looking at it and then, but stepping back and looking holistically at like everything that you're doing, kind of like what you mentioned before with food. So for example, if you guys are listening to this and you're not familiar with these neurotransmitters he's talking about, dopamine, dopamine is associated with um, drive, ambition, creativity, um, caring about what's happening in your life, um, feeling confident, more executive thinking, decision-making. If you're struggling with those things, might want to take a look at dopamine. Um, also food. And weight as well. And what? Weight, uh, addiction. Yeah. yeah. Addiction, addictive behaviors for sure. And I see dopamine all the time, especially with my high achievers, which I find very fascinating. Um, and I think that some people, I truly believe that some people have fueled their addictive behaviors, looking for more dopamine into success behaviors. Mm. So these people will tend to be very fit, very business driven, very successful. Right. But they're kind of like, hello, I'm like raising my hand. If you're not watching me on, on YouTube, because I know this about myself, I do have tons of double mutations on dopamine genes and I I'm aware. So I take tyrosine every morning to help build that. I eat foods full of tyrosine. I'm constantly trying to build my dopamine, but I do recognize that I have some of those addictive tendencies, I've just funneled into, funneled those addictive tendencies into things that get me what I want out of life instead of things that are will destroy my life because you can just as easily funnel that into sex addiction, gambling, uh, drugs, alcohol, all those things. Um, serotonin would be like, I call serotonin the grandma molecule. <laughs> I'm coining, coining that. Serotonin to me just feels like like happiness, like, like love. <laughs> if you'll, and there's, there's other uh, mood aspects associated with it. But most of all, when I see people low on serotonin, I mean, we see a lot of anxiety and, and even further things that kind of look like mental illness, honestly, it can go that far when serotonin is low, yeah. but um, it has impact on, on uh, confidence as well. Yeah. Yeah. And just like not feeling like it's like you feel disconnected, like you just don't care or love anyone. And when serotonin is at healthier levels, it's like, oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. I love you. Oh, like <laughs> that's right. kind of serotonin. Um, that's why I call it the sure. grandma molecule. And then GABA, it would be like not having any brakes on your car. <laughs> that's, right. how bra- that's how your brain feels with low GABA, right? And a lot of that has got issues. So maybe we can segue from there. But it's cool to see like if you're having issues with any of these things from a mood perspective, Let's look at your genetics. Let's see if you're predisposed for some of these issues. But then let's also look at like, what are you eating? Because serotonin and GABA are almost exclusively made in your guts, right? So, um, right. yeah, can we, can we boost it? Since you're like, I mean, I feel like you have so many resources. There's like so many places I would love to go with you <laughs> from like self-hacked because it is just like, to me, self-hacked is the ultimate biohacking resource website. So if you guys want to know about nootropics to just any of the cutting edge stuff you're hearing about in health, like I love your website because it has so much information on everything and the most obscure little thing, you know, you hear Dave Asprey rattle off some peptide and you're like, what is that? Self-hacked has got, probably got an article on it already. So I love that. But um, yeah, gut health. Can we, can we segue into that now? And what are your, what sure. are your thoughts and discoveries on gut health that might be helpful to people who maybe um, they are aware of their gut issues? Maybe they're not, but what should people know in regards to sure. gut health? So, um, and by the way, we recently combined self-hacked with self-decode. Mm-hmm. Did you? Yeah, so, so it's all self-decode? Yeah, uh, the lab analyzer, the self hacked, and it's all part of self decode now. Got it. Okay, thanks for letting me know that. Yeah, basically, um, with 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 regard to self hacked, you know, um, maybe maybe your audience knows, but basically, Google has been censoring health information. Nice. And yeah, I, I mean, yeah. So uh, it's very basically sites can't rank anymore for Google unless you're one of the big corporate. Uh, health websites like WebMD or something like that, or like a hospital. And what we did was we was like, okay, we have all these, you know, we have all these great posts and Google was ranking us a lot. Mm -hmm. And then they just decided that, you know, no um, non-billion dollar health website is going to rank pretty much. Uh, so I'm just gonna vent for a second because I'm always trying to get past all of those websites. Like I literally will type in like what I'm looking for and like, Mark Sisson, Rob Wolf, self hacked. That's <laughs> I'm like trying right. to get That's easier. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. 
So you but what we did is we, we decided to combine it with self decode. Um, you know, basically it's like five free articles a month and then it just, it's part of the same subscription. So with the lab analyzer, uh, self hacked and you know, if people are, yeah. And because basically we, you know, we weren't getting any traffic from, we don't, we don't get much traffic from Google anymore. Whereas we used to be getting tons. Um, and then, yeah, so it's all one part of one thing now. Got it. Okay, cool. That's good to know. And yeah, there's, I'll put links to all that below guys in the show notes. If you guys want to find out more, such an amazing resource. So definitely worth it. But, um, but yeah, gut health, what's, what, what would you, what would you share with anybody wanting to know more about gut health, why it matters, what they might want to know? So gut health, um, you know, people's issues can, you know, different areas of the body can be a source of people's issues. And the gut is one common way, especially for people with food sensitivities. So one report that we have is a food sensitivity report, like I mentioned. Um, But then we we have a gut health, gut inflammation report. And if you find that your gut is acting up, that you have some kinds of gut inflammation, it could be basically any kind of gut condition could signify gut inflammation like uh, IBS or IBD. And I had IBS in the past. Mm -hmm. And um, so I knew that I was having gut inflammation. Mm -hmm. It was always very bloated. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, always had gut problems. And so if you're having gut problems, you definitely want the gut health report. And uh, basically what it does is uh, it's not only the report, it's also the personalized health blog. So you could use both those resources. It, it basically prioritizes the genes that are increasing your risk for gut inflammation the most. And then it shows you how you can counteract those uh, genes and also improve gut health while you're at it. And so we give you the prioritized list in the report and then the blog posts allow you to go into a deeper dive into each gene, the personalized blog posts. Yeah, that's awesome. Like for me, like, I'm just like gut health is health. It it is like, you know how they call the gut, the second brain. I'm like, "Mm, yeah, the first brain. (laughs) It's really important. Yeah. Yeah. It's really important. And when we're looking at uh, genes related to gut inflammation, a lot of that has to do with the TH1, TH2, TH17 system. These are kind of, uh, you know, immune, these are like immune profiles that, either make you more susceptible to inflammation from food or less, um, or just, you know, general susceptibility to inflammation in your gut. So that has a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, there's like genes related to like alarm bells, like the toll-like receptors, those have an effect. Uh, But basically there's quite a, there's quite a few genes that are related to gut health and you want to see which ones are increasing your risk of gut inflammation. Um, the HLA genes could be important. And so, yeah, I think, you know, there's, it's definitely something you want to find out. And that's something that helped me personally quite a lot. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, cause it comes from, it's not just, well, the mental health aspect is a huge aspect. And I mean, I can't tell you how many people have come to me and they're on SSRIs, they're on lots of things and they are not in a good way. And I'm like, so how bad is your gut? <laughs> it's not like, oh, do you have gut? It's like, how bad is it? Like what's going on? You know, and right. that, like, I can't even believe, like, like you were saying, I, you know, I had a, a friend I was putting through keto and he's like, this is the first time I've been able to work a full day, like ever. <laughs> like I've never right. worked a full day. Like I literally just couldn't before. Like, I don't even know who I am right now. And I truly, a lot of that I believe was gut healing <laughs> because when your gut is messed up, everything's in inflamed everything like you're you're you can't make the neurochemicals in your gut that you need to feel happy and then on top of it your whole body is inflamed so you're like how are you supposed to be able to work out and feel good and have energy throughout the day when everything is diminished so it's so wild that's a similar thing that happened to me when i had gut inflammation i also had like lower levels of motivation once my gut inflammation improved the a lot of other things like the inflammation, the rest of my body improved. Yeah. And I was able to then work, you know, 60 hours a week. That's what I do now. And, um, you know, and, and things just got way better. Like 
Every, okay. my, I was more stable in my mood. Um, so for me, a lot of the issues were gut related. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people have gut issues. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, IBS is, itself is extremely common, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, so any kind of gut issue you really want to, like, it could be weighing you down for sure. Yeah, I I love like looking into like you can look at interleukin six, you can look at things in the small intestines. Can you and convert B twelve into its active form? Like that, those are all really really vital to your energy levels throughout the day. And like if you guys don't know, I was just sharing this with my clients the other day. 90% of the magic happens in your small intestine. Like all of this stuff we're talking about in the gut, it's all the way down in your small intestine. So looking at some of these genes correlated with health in the small intestine is really important. Cause like, if you're having issues with, like I said, B12 or maybe interleukin six, like those are things you're going to want to tackle because it can be literally life-changing. That's why this is why I do the DNA stuff. I think you too, because at first when DNA stuff started coming out, like when 23 Me came out, like I was so anti, I was like, oh bullshit. Like this is going to be like just a bunch of like people just trying to make money and blah, blah, blah. Like I was so against it, but I was like, because I was against it like that, I like to challenge myself. And I was like, I'll just try. I, I will try it. So, so I can prove that it's bullshit. <laughs> it's kind of where I was at. And, um, I started running out, you know, I was using a different software I analyzed, but I was running off of these, these genes and I started doing all the things I started supplementing for dopamine. I started, um, taking care of some of these little, little micro things and that it was like life changing for me. Like truly <laughs> I it was that whole, like, I didn't know I could live at another level until I did. And then like, I actually went through a little break. Um, I, I went and did ayahuasca and I like had this big, like, like, I'm not going to put anything in my body, like <laughs> face. So like, I didn't take any of these supplements or follow any of these protocols for like months. And when I got back on them, I, that's when I was like, I will never stop doing that again. My body needs this kind of support. Cause I went from like, just feeling kind of like low and flat to like, level 10 billion motivation. Like my business was growing, my relationships were getting better. So it does for me anyway, I don't know about you, but like the reason I do this stuff is because it has been so life-changing for me truly on how I show up every day. So yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, it's, it's, I've had a similar experience where um, knowing my genetics really had, was, it was a game changer for me. It mm -hmm. brought my health to the next level. And I think I think it's very foreign to a lot of people. They they think like I mean let's you, we really should look at this stuff from a very basic point of view. We know that genetics has a very big role in pretty much any issue that you have. That's very clear. There's nobody that disagrees with that. And so I think getting your genetic sequence is usually important. Mm -hmm. Now the only argument is how much do we know right now? that we can improve based on your genetics, it's not a hundred percent, right? It's not, it, it's going, it, it is, it is, it is a developing field. So it's kind right. of like a field that is going through very rapid growth right now. And yeah. we're learning a lot more and things are going to change right. and we're going to get more updates. Things are going to get more accurate. Tools yeah. are going to get better. And we're trying to ride that wave of get, you know, keep on improving, never stop yeah. improving. Yeah. But, Right now, I would say it still has, uh, you know, a significant impact. You can, you know, you can learn a lot from your genetics. And I think it's something that, you know, if you're taking your health seriously, it's something that you should do. Yeah, I think you nailed it on that. I think it, it, it's, it requires, it's like, I don't want anyone to get religious here where you like, it's like, I totally subscribe to that belief. And then we found out something new and like, screw it all. Like, because you have to have like an open mind here to know that this is an emerging science. Like no one, right. like, duh, obviously we don't know everything about DNA. Like, okay, poof, create a human oh, we can't do that from scratch. Okay. We still have things to learn about the human body. Like, so I don't want right. to exactly. delusion or think, you know, like you have to, I think, come into it with an open mind of like, this is the information we have now. That's interesting. I'm going to see how that affects my life. What are the results I get out of that? Do I like those results? All right, cool. I'm going to keep doing that thing. If we get more science and something changes and we, it's like, you've got to be open-minded to it like that. And I think it's such an important thing to share with DNA stuff, because I think sometimes it can be a stumbling block for people. They won't even look at it because they're like, Ugh, there's not enough research there. Like it's a bunch of crock. It's like, mm, 
hold on, like at least right. consider it, you know, and then be open-minded to changes as we go, because obviously no, we're, none of us are going to live long enough, in my opinion, to even see even close to the end of what we're going to learn about genetics, you know, so right. just an open mind, but it still yeah, I think serves a purpose. It's, it's kind of like, you know, you're in a house and, you know, uh, your genetics is your blueprint, right? It, it could be, let's say, it's the blueprint of your body. It could be the blueprint of your house, let's say. If you have a leak, you know, uh, you could look at your blueprint and say, okay, we're, right. what are, you know, what are the weak pipes here? What, what, what's, what are the weak parts here in the house? Right. You know, um, and then you say, oh, you know what? It could be this problem based on, you know, knowledge of the house you, once you have your blueprint, but you don't know for sure. You have to like check it out and see and try it out. Right. But essentially, you know, it, it's giving you that blueprint, which allows you to be more focused and intentional about things that you try for a specific, to optimize a specific area. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I guess I, I wrapping this up, like there's, there's so much more, you guys. <laughs> like, I feel like we only like, we like literally took our fingernail and like scratched the surface of what self decode has to offer. But I wanted to give you guys a little taste because this is actually, thank you for coming on because this is a problem solver for me because I'm talking about this all the time, but I haven't had something that anyone listening to me can access. Like you have to work with me currently one-on-one -on -one to be able to have access to this kind of analysis. But now I have something to offer in everyone. So, um, Joe's team is giving you guys 10% off the code is coach Tara. Um, that's T A R A. So I'll put a link in the show notes so that you guys can use self decode.com. Um, and you can use that for 10% off sub subscriptions there. But I like, I can't, I can't be a big enough cheerleader because for me, it's made such a tremendous impact for my clients. It's made such a tremendous impact to dig a little deeper and finding out how your biology actually works and stop crap shooting it. Like we don't have to crap shoot it so much anymore you guys we don't have to hear like vitamin vitamin whatever is good so take that vitamin like do you need that <laughs> like so let's start like let's find out let's start testing let's find out what you need that's going to turn the needle for you you know and that's that's where this stuff starts so definitely check it out um joe is there anything any other things that you would share with people before we close this up yeah i would i would want to uh just mention what topics that uh for example certain topics that we have for, you know, we, folk, we have a focus on the brain. Uh, we speak about longevity, weight, uh, like, like um, you know, post-trauma, anxiety, focus, pain, nutrition and diet. These are kind of uh, thyroid, um, you know, we have fitness. And basically, th these are like a lot of topics that uh, we focus on. So we have reports on these topics. And then we also have like the personalized health blog. Um, and so you really can get like, and then we also have, you know, you could upload your labs and look at how, you know, what, what, what labs are suboptimal and what you need to improve. Uh, so that's the labs are the, the story where it's like, how's your body functioning right now right. In, in a specific way? Yeah. So yeah. I would just say that those are, uh, some of the, you know, uh, we have other topics as well, but some of the, uh, I think those, some of those topics are relevant to your audience. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that guys. It's, it's a tremendous resource. Like I don't know if we've done it enough justice, honestly, in this podcast, but it's such an incredible resource that you've built for optimizing health. And it's so like user-friendly. It's so easy to follow all the information's right there. Like it does not leave you wondering or lacking or wishing for more. So go check it out. Um, at self .com. Again, you can use coach Tara and get 10% off subscriptions there. And yeah, I can't recommend it enough. So um, yeah. Thank you so much, Joe, for coming on all the way from across the world. <laughs> I'm sure it's a little late where you are and sharing this with us. I, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. My pleasure.